Hello, welcome to Physics 2425, Summer 2020. I'll be going over in a live session a little bit about the syllabus and expectations for the course, but most of the lecture is going to be in this format where I post little short segments uh, to YouTube, and then you can get to watch them uh, on your own time. So this is our first, first lecture of this sort. So what is physics? Well, physics is a quantitative study of the universe and how it works. Okay, the important part is quantitative. So math. This is a calculus-based class, and so I expect, expect you to be able to do calculus. And we'll be getting into that actually pretty quickly here. Uh, uh, later this week, we'll be doing calculus. So the areas of physics here uh, that, that we study, uh, kinematics, this kinematics is basically the study of motion. These are things that are moving. So something goes from here to there. And so, so you have an object and it's here and you want it to get it there and you've got to figure out how to make that, how, how that motion, you want to describe the motion. So you want to describe the motion, describe how it gets from here to there. So we have equations of motion. So kinematics is basically just really fancy way of saying it's a way of studying motion. Okay. Dynamics and statics. This is where we introduce the idea of force. F equals MA. So now acceleration is related to the motion. We talk about acceleration and kinematics. Kinematics, we talk about position, velocity, and acceleration. Now we introduce the idea of force, something that makes something move. Um, so you exert a force and it moves. Well, the other thing that we learn when we're talking about this is that you can have an object, you can have a force in one direction, but you can have a force in another direction. If these forces balance out, then the object doesn't move. It stays put. Okay, and so that's the idea of statics. Now, um, in, in engineering, you often have a course, statics and dynamics, courses, statics and dynamics. And so, uh, so you, you ask, well, what's, what's, what's the deal here? What, 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 what are we about these courses? Well, dynamics is a natural sort of thing. You sort of force things move. Statics, as a physicist, I always thought this was kind of boring. You just watch things sit there. Well, it really is not that boring. Uh, statics is a very important sort of thing because you imagine a tall building or skyscraper and it doesn't want to be tall. It wants to fall down and, and into a pile of rubble. You know, bridges don't want to like cross over uh, 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 gorges and rivers and things. They want to fall into them. Uh, things want to go to the lowest uh, uh, energy level. And so trying to make buildings stand up or bridges not collapse, uh, that is the idea of statics. And, and that's a big deal. Uh, thermodynamics, uh, this is the study, obviously, of thermal heat. Uh, uh, and, and the motion of energy from one thing to another. Basically, thermodynamics is a study of energy. And then electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is, is basically a study of electricity and magnetism, as the name implies. Uh, optics, study of light and light behavior. Well, one of the things we discover is optics naturally falls out of electromagnetism because light is electromagnetic waves. So these two really fit together right in there. And another thing that fits in together in there is not on the list is relativity. So relativity also fits into this same general sort of, of electromagnetism. Uh, kinematics, statics, dynamics, thermodynamics. This is all stuff that we normally cover in Physics 1. So this is Physics 24, 25. That's this semester. The, all this stuff is 24, 26. So that's going to be next semester. Um, another topic uh, that comes up is quantum mechanics, the quantized nature of what happens at subatomic levels. Uh, this, this is uh, typically a, a uh, uh, course in which you study how atoms work and nuclei and so forth. Uh, 
that starts physics three. We don't offer physics three at TCC. And then statistical physics, this is systems of things. Just statistical physics and thermodynamics are very closely related uh, because you can't really necessarily study Avogadro's number worth of molecules moving around. So you have to have a statistical analysis of as to how things move. Kinematics. Uh, chapter two, we actually start talking about physics. Uh, so chapter one is basically uh, the background stuff. But when we get to chapter two, we start talking about kinematics. And we start talking about translation. One-dimensional translation. That's moving along a line. Uh, we get to chapter four. That's two-dimensional translation. That's like parabolic motion. It's like throwing something. It follows an arc. And so the, these, these are what are coming. Then we're going to talk about rotational motion in later chapters. So that would be something moving around a circle. Now, something going in a circle you can think of as translating from here to there. So it's moving up and over. Well, it's a lot simpler just to talk about the angle at which it turns. And so that's, that's our, our way that we're going to be doing that. Uh, vibration uh, turns out to be like, for example, a mass hanging on a spring bouncing up and down. You can talk about that as translating, but it's a lot easier to describe it uh, with a simple equation for vibration. And then waves... The wave properties, and we'll talk about wave properties again towards the, the latter, latter part of the semester. Uh, sound waves, light waves, and so forth, all, all that goes into next semester. But waves are waves, mechanical waves, waves on a spring, the, uh, waves on a string. Wave, we discovered that all this is waves. And in fact, the, the equation describing waves also turn out to be, come up in quantum mechanics in terms of describing how atoms work. And so this is the basics here of physics, and this is where we're going to be going with all of this. It's a quantitative study, so that means we have to have mathematics, so we have to make a measurement of something. So um, your book doesn't really talk about this, but I like to mention there's two kinds of measurements. There's what's called direct measurements and indirect measurements. A direct measurement is when you actually measure what you're trying to measure. So, for example, if someone asks you what size screen are you watching this presentation on? Well, you can take a ruler and measure the display. That's directly measuring what you want to measure. On the other hand, you want to know how fast you're driving down the road you look at the speedometer. Now, the question is, does the speedometer actually measure how fast you're moving? And the answer is actually no. The speedometer really measures how fast the wheels are rotating. Uh, so if you're on an icy road, for example, you can hit the accelerator if you're sitting still and your wheels start moving and the speedometer reads something even though you're not moving. Uh, uh, conversely, if it's an icy road and you're driving along and you hit the brakes and your wheels lock up, they stop spinning, so the speedometer says zero as you continue sliding. And so, so that would be an indirect measure. Another indirect measure, for example, is an uh, airspeed indicator on an aircraft, a uh, pitot tube. What it does is it measures the difference in pressure uh, of moving air versus static air and then relates that to how fast you're going. Well, there's other sort of calculations that have to go into that. And so it doesn't mean indirect measures are not good measurements. It does mean, however, that you're measuring something other than directly what you're trying to measure. And so a good engineer or scientist will realize that there's a difference between these two types of measurements and, and compensate for that. The indirect measure, you're measuring something and calculating what you wanted to measure. It's perfectly fine. You can do that. Just know that that's what you're doing.